there has definitely been a point, perhaps multiple times, where you're consuming content, whether it's an article, a YouTube video, or a podcast, and as you consume it, in the back of your mind, you're more concerned with capturing the information and how you'll do it, rather than the content itself. And this friction alone takes a lot of the pleasure away from the content you're consuming, and up until now, the closest thing we had to fix this was Readwise, which aggregated all of our insights we found on the web, whether it's podcasts, tweets, books, etc., and automatically exported them into our app of choice, whether it's Obsidian, Notion, or others. This was a pretty good alternative to doing everything manually, but it still had a major issue. If you wanted to take notes on something like a YouTube video, you had to rely on Chrome extensions and a bit of manual work. If you wanted to take notes on different blog posts, maybe through an RSS feed, you had to have more apps and likely paid ones to do that. And don't even get me started on podcasts. However, late last year, Readwise released Readwise Reader, and that changed everything. So what is Reader? Reader is probably the most powerful reader later app out there right now, kind of like Pocket or Instapaper, but on a whole other level, because it's also a Twitter, newsletter, and RSS reader, and it even works on YouTube videos. It also funnels all of your content sources into one centralized location, which automatically connects to Readwise and exports all of it to your app of choice. It's important to note that Reader is still in public beta, but I found it to be very stable. I've been using it daily for a while now without a single issue. So let's move over to the screen and take a look at it. All right, so you can find Reader by coming to readwise.io and it'll be here on top. If you don't yet have a Readwise account, they have a 30 day free trial available so you can follow along. And if you use my link below, you get an extra 30 days on top of that. Once you're logged into Readwise, you can just click on Reader here or just type in forward slash read. And now you're on Readwise's Reader. When you open up Reader for the first time, it'll prompt you to install their Readwise browser extension as well as the iOS and Android apps. So let's now use that extension to grab an article. And I'm going to grab one of the articles that I'm going to feature in my monthly newsletter for January. And it's right here. So then if we click on the Readwise Reader extension, I now have the option to annotate anything I want straight here. But I'd rather do that inside Reader because the experience is much better. I'm going to make this a little bigger so you guys can see. And now this article lives in our inbox. So the first thing to understand about Reader is how it's broken down. We have a Home tab, Library, and the Feed tab. And the Home tab is kind of like a Netflix homepage. You can continue what you're reading and you suggest the different things based on different parameters such as recently added, quick reads, and long reads. You can configure this to your liking by coming over here to the top right, press Configure, and you can toggle on what it is you want to see on the Home tab. Next up, we have the library and the feed tab. And the library is stuff that you find online and save into Reader. So the article that we just saved is over here in our inbox. And I like to manage my library the same way I manage my to-do list. If you're interested, I have a video on it as well. But in short, nothing ever stays in my inbox. It needs to end up in either later, archive, or be deleted. So let's look at the article that we just saved and let's do some highlighting. And the first thing is that everything can be done with the keyboard. You can use up and down arrows to navigate across your article. You can hide the side panels by pressing the different brackets. You can press H to highlight the current paragraph, which will be exported to your app of choice. T to give it a tag. And if you press O, it's going to take you to that website. And I'm just scratching the surface here. If you press the question mark, you can see a list of everything that you can do with the keyboard. You can't yet customize the keyboard shortcuts, but you will in the future. And lastly, just like Notion or Obsidian, you also have the command palette, which in Reader is Command or Control K. So when you press it, there's a lot of things that you can do straight from here. If I press on the right bracket, you can see who the author was. You can see the domain, when it was published, how long ago it was saved, and how long it'll take you to read. And you even have a notebook for the document and you can write a document note. And if whatever I'm reading was recommended by someone, I just put that here. And on the left hand side, you would see chapters or headers for easy navigation. But because this is a short one, it won't have anything. But I just added an article here by Ali Abdal. And if you want to search, just press forward slash. I'm going to type Ali Abdal. And this is what it would look like if it was full. And one of the best features, which actually already works on mobile, is to have it read back to you at whatever speed you like. You can even change the voice. This functionality is not yet on the desktop, but the Readwise team said they'll bring it soon. And when you highlight something and you know it's going to end up in Obsidian, you can just use double brackets because even though Readwise can't read it, Obsidian can. So in this case here, let's say that I'm highlighting this here in a nutshell and I make a note on the highlight, I can just say relates to skincare. And then when I open it up in Obsidian, I'm going to have the link to skincare active. All right, so let's now move on to one of my favorite features, which is taking notes on YouTube videos. So I'm going to come here to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to play my last video and I'm going to put it in Reader by clicking the browser extension. And then I can open this up in Reader. And as you can see, it pulls the transcript and you can follow along where you are in the video through the transcript. So if I hit play, it's going to highlight where I am on the video. And this also works even if I speed it up. And if I click on different parts of the transcript, it's going to take me to that part of the video. 
And then you can highlight whatever you want. You can then come to Obsidian and I'm going to manually sync. As you can see, the video is right here and here are my highlights. And I'm going to get into the Obsidian configuration in the later parts of the video. It's also worth mentioning that at times there may be some small parsing errors because remember this is still in beta. And also for now, the videos that you take highlights on live over here in the articles folder. But in the future, I imagine that Readwise will have a dedicated video section because there's a lot of demand for that. Another way I've been using Reader is for Twitter threads. So let's say I'm reading this thread I got right here from Thomas Frank, and I can share this thread to Readwise by sharing it via private message. And I just type in a T. And now I can just come back to Readwise. And now it's here in my inbox and I can just take my highlights on it as I would with a blog post. Normally when I'm going over my inbox in my library, which usually happens first thing in the morning or at night, I just go one by one. And if it's something I actually wanna read, I'll just press L to save it for later. And if I'm done reading it and I got nothing out of value, I'll just press D to delete. And then I'm gonna say I'm sure. And then from the later tab, the ones that I wanna save and reference to in the future, I'm gonna archive it. I'm gonna press E for that. And then if I wanna find a piece of content that I archived, I can just come to my archive tab or I can just press forward slash and search for what I want. You can also have different library setups by clicking here on library and then edit library locations. By default, you'll have the triage workflow, which uses the inbox later archive system. But if you want, you can choose the shortlist workflow, which gets rid of the inbox altogether and everything lands on the later page. And then you can move the documents you want to focus on into shortlist and then to archive. And lastly, you can also have the classic workflow, which as they say, is kind of like Instapaper or Pocket, and it just has a later and an archive. Before we move on to the feed tab, I want to talk about today's sponsor, which Readwise also has an integration with, and that is Shortform. Shortform is an app that provides concise and insightful summaries of the best books, articles, and educational material. Over the holidays, I read one of Austin Kleon's books titled Keep Going, and the first thing I did when I finished it was to head over to Shortform to look at the summary. Now you might be thinking, why are you looking at the summary of a book you just read? And the reason is that Shortform isn't just summarizing what you read, it's also providing their own research-backed input about each important point in the summary. These short form interventions add a ton of value to what you're reading because they can support what you just read, but also at times they will provide a counter argument to the author's point, which really helps foster our own critical thinking. And that's what makes short form great. Short form covers dozens of genres, including philosophy, productivity, and self-improvement. And because short form integrates with Readwise, whatever I highlight in short form will show up in my Obsidian Vault seamlessly. Shortform is constantly updating their library with new books and articles, so there's always something new to discover and subscribers get to vote on what books to cover. To get a 5-day free trial, join Shortform through my special link shortform.com slash from Sergio or click the link in the description. Thanks Shortform for sponsoring this video. Alright, so now we're on the feed tab and this is where all the stuff that you already subscribe to will land, such as RSS feeds, newsletters and even Twitter lists. So if you create a Twitter list in your Twitter account, you can just make that list public and then just paste the URL for that list right here under manage feeds. And I'm going to come here to Nassim Taleb's list and I have one here for math Twitter. And if I press the share button, copy link to list, come back to readwise, then I can come here to add feed and paste it here. Then I'm going to give it a second. As you can see, it's adding the newest five items. All right, so it already picked up Math Twitter. So if I come back to feed, I can see Math Twitter is here. And the latest tweets from the accounts on that list will always be shown here. This is one of the few features of Reader that I don't really use. I prefer to browse Twitter on my app or the website. And the tweets that I do want to look into, I'll save those into Reader. Another source of content that you can have on your feed are newsletters. So if you come back here and we press the blue plus icon, and we go into more import options. And when we scroll down, we can see that Readwise provides us with two emails, one to send it to the library, to our inbox, and another one to forward it to our feed. Personally, I prefer to have my newsletters land on my feed. And then for the ones that I know I wanna pay more attention to, I just move those to the inbox. So whenever I'm signing up for a newsletter, I just give them this address right here, which sends all the newsletters to my feed. But if you'd rather have your emails land in your email inbox, you can set up auto forwarding with your own email provider like Gmail. You can make a rule that emails from a specific newsletter get forward to this address right here if you want it to go to the feed or this address right here if you want it to go to the inbox. The other main thing that lands in my feed are my RSS subscriptions. And if you don't know what an RSS feed is, it's just an automatic subscription to a website's posts. And Readwise lets you do that straight from Reader. Once you're on an article or a blog post or even some newsletters, you'll see here on the side that we have an option to subscribe to this person's feed. So if I subscribe to Ali Abdal, Every new post that gets published on Ali Abdal's website will show up here on my feed. 
And before using Reader, I was using three different apps to manage my RSS feed. I was using Inner Reader as an RSS aggregator. I was then using an iOS and Mac app called Reader to read my feeds. And then finally, Instapaper as my Reader Later solution. And this was all replaced by Reader. You can also head over here to manage feeds to see not only the feeds that you're subscribed to, but also this new feature called Suggested. And as the name implies, this is suggesting you feeds based on what you read. So over here, high signal feeds is from sources that you read a lot. And then here, lower signal are from ones that you've occasionally saved, read, or highlighted. I imagine that in the future, it'll suggest your new feeds based on the ones that you already have. And I really like that Readwise tells us the frequency of the feed, because if you see something here that's like, 100 posts a day, I mean, it's obvious that you're not going to sign up for that. It's just going to clutter your whole space. So it's a really nice addition to see that here. And over here on the left side ribbon, we have a bunch of these different views as default. And all of your content will be automatically parsed into these different folders. So all of your articles will be here, your emails here, your tweets here, etc. And if you click here on the gear icon and then manage filtered views, and everything that's on the sidebar can be managed here in the filtered views. So if you don't want to see books in your sidebar, just come here and simply unpin from sidebar. And as you can see, all of these different views are defined by the queries here. And these queries work kind of like SQL or data view in Obsidian. You can tell it exactly what you want as a filter as long as you specify it using their syntax. And I'm gonna leave a link to their syntax in the description. But in the future, I imagine it'll look very similar to something like Notion where you have a user interface with drop-down lists for different filters. The last thing I wanna show you before the Obsidian configuration is the ghost reader. So if you click on anything you have saved in reader and press command K for command palette, you can type invoke ghost reader or just press shift G. And when you press it, we have all these different options that we can do with it. And you can tell it to summarize the content. And in here, you'll see this little ghost shows up, which means that it's working. And once it's done, it'll add it to the documents note over here on the right hand side. You can also ask it to generate some questions or generate Q&A pairs based on your own highlights. All right, so let's now go over the Obsidian configuration. So I'm going to come here into my Obsidian vault and I need to install a plugin. So I'm going to come here to settings, browse, and we're going to search for readwise official. And here it is. We're going to install, we're going to enable, then options. And now we need to go into the readwise's website to authenticate. So in here, I'm going to go to readwise and I'll come to dashboard. And in here for export, I already have for this account, I already have Obsidian here. But if you don't, you need to click on Obsidian and click connect. And then we can come back to the Readwise official plugin settings and click connect. And it's going to take us to the config page inside Readwise. And by default, the plugin will create a folder called Readwise. And inside that folder, you'll have a subfolder for books, articles, tweets, and podcasts. And over here, we can have a custom file name. And I do make a small change here. If you want, you can go through all the documentation. But all I do here is add the author followed by title. And you can see we have a preview here on the right. And then I leave most of this as default, but I do have my own YAML front matter, which is this. So this will just create a YAML here for author tags and when this note was created. So then if we come back to the plugin settings, you can see we have an option here to configure resync frequency. I'll choose the smallest that they'll let me, which is one hour. But you can also activate it manually by pressing command P for command palette, readwise, and we have the option sync your data now. And as you can see, it was already synced. So over here on the left, we can see we have a Readwise folder. And since we only looked up and saved articles, those two are already here. And as you can see, the YAML configuration was already applied as well. If you're thinking of signing up with Readwise, now is probably the best time you could do it because if you come here to readwise.io slash read and you scroll all the way down to the frequently asked questions, and you click on the second one, it tells you that once Reader officially exits beta, we intend to reprice Readwise Reader. So they're increasing the price, which is fair, but they say here only for new subscribers. And they say it again, this means that if you subscribe while Reader's in beta, you'll get lifetime access for $7.99. And you know Readwise is not sponsoring me, but I really think this is a great deal. And in all honesty, I was actually not a Readwise subscriber until Reader came along. It was a good service, but it felt more like a nice to have rather than a need. But with Reader, this is honestly a no-brainer. All right, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. Let me know what you thought. And also let me know if you enjoyed the way I laid out the studio. I made a couple big changes, and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.